Section 3.11, hyperbolic functions. Functions that have the same relationship to the hyperbola that trigonometric functions have to the circle are called hyperbolic functions and are defined as follows. So remember that for our unit circle, we would have the x value as cosine of theta and the y value as sine of theta, where theta was the angle formed over here. And then this was 1, this was minus 1. Well, for our hyperbolic um, functions, we're going to look at our unit hyperbola. So here's x, here's y, and Let's make some asymptotes. So this looks something like uh, this. OK, that's our unit hyperbola. This is at 1. That's at minus 1. And any point over here will be cosh of a, say, and psi and cinch of a, where this is a little bit different, that uh, a value is actually double of this area right over here. This area over here is a over 2. So when we look at our unit circle, we're looking at functions of an angle. So all the trig functions take, fun take an argument of an angle. All of our hyperbolic functions take an argument of the, an area, which we call the hyperbolic angle, even though it's not an angle. It's their functions of area. So remember that for the unit circle, it was x squared plus y squared equals 1. For our unit hyperbola, it's x squared minus y squared equals 1. So it should make sense when we want to prove this identity that cosh squared minus cinch squared is equal to 1, because cosine squared plus sine squared was equal to 1. OK, notice also that these are all defined using um, exponential functions. So in particular, if you look at uh, cosh, it's always positive because these guys are both positive. OK, so we have a number of identities. We know that uh, cinch of minus x is the same as minus cinch of x. We know that cosh of minus x is the same as cosh of x. We're about to prove this identity right over here. And then we'll prove that identity over there. And then there are also some angle identities, in this case, some area identities that you could prove yourselves. So let's prove this one. Let's start with cosh squared minus cinch squared. So that equals e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 squared, because that's exactly what we defined cosh to be. And we'll subtract off what we defined cinch to be. And then we'll simplify that. So we get e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x all over 4 minus e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x over 4. So notice we have e to the 2x uh, minus e to the 2x. Let's see if I can cancel that. We have e to the minus 2x minus e to the minus 2x. 
However, we have uh, two minus a minus two is positive four. So that's one, which is exactly what we wanted. So everything lines up with the way that we defined it with x squared minus y squared equals one. We have our nice relationship that we wanted to have. It doesn't completely motivate why we would define them using these exponential functions, but that's actually kind of a complicated matter. So we're not gonna get into it too much because we would actually wanna just do some calculus with these guys. Okay. In order to prove our other identity, let's start with the identity that we just proved. So cosh squared minus cinch squared. And we can divide everything by uh, cosh squared. So cosh squared divided by cosh squared is one. Minus cinch squared divided by cosh squared. So that's one over cosh squared, which is the same as 1 minus tanch squared, and 1 over cosh squared is uh, the definition for what we said such squared would be. Oops, I'm sorry. I did 1 over twice. The whole point is we're getting rid of the one over. When we flip it, it becomes secant hyperbolic. Okay, so we have the derivatives of uh, hyperbolic functions. The derivative of cinch is cosh. Derivative of cosh is cinch. Derivative of tanch is sech. Derivative of cosech is minus cosech, koth, and so on. Uh, these aren't hard to prove. If you go back to the definition, notice you want the derivative of cinch. Well, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x. So you got already a minus. So those two minus cancel and become plus. Similarly, if you take the derivative of cosh, you get e to the x is e to the x. e to the minus x becomes minus e to the minus x. Notice there's no extra minus out in front. So the derivative of cosh is not minus cinch. There is no minus. These are both positive either way. So they're kind of nicer than the original trig functions, at least in that sense. You don't have to minus sign to worry about. Okay, so you could prove the other one similarly, but let's just do an example. If we want the derivative of cosh square root, we'll do ddx of cosine hyperbolic square root of x that equals the sine hyperbolic square root of x times the derivative of what was inside by the chain rule. So the derivative square root of x. So that's just uh, cinch square root of x over 2 rad x. Okay, we can also define inverse hyperbolic functions. And then we could say that those inverse hyperbolic functions are equal to these uh, natural logarithmic functions. It should make some sense that um, since we defined all of our hyperbolic functions in terms of E, that our inverse functions would be defined in terms of ln because that's the inverse of E. So let's just prove one of them. Let's show that uh, the inverse for the sine hyperbolic function will be equal to this natural log. So let's let y equals cinch inverse. Okay, then that means that x is equal to cinch of y, which is e to the y minus e to the minus y over two. Okay, so if x is equal to that, then we can multiply both sides by two, and we can move everything to one side so that it equals zero, so that we get e to the y minus two x minus e to the minus y is equal to zero. 
if we want to now multiply everything by e to the y, we could cancel out this e to the minus y. So we get e to the 2y minus 2x times e to the y minus 1 equals 0. And at first glance, that doesn't look any better. But it's way better, because now this is the same as e to the y squared minus 2x times e to the y minus 1 equals 0. So we have something squared minus uh, a constant times something. In this case, we can think of the x temporarily as a constant because we're thinking about it with respect to y. Relative to y, x is constant. So we have something squared minus constant times something minus something minus uh, constant is 0. That's a quadratic. If you were to let t be this thing, this is like the same thing as saying t squared minus 2t minus 1 equals 0, disregarding the x. So that means we can use the quadratic formula. We pretend x is constant, and we'll get a formula for e to the y in terms of x. So we get that this equals 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared plus 4 all over 2. So that equals x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. However, e to the y is always positive. So we can reject this minus over here and just say that e to the y is going to be equal to x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. So now we can do a natural log. We know that y will be equal to ln of e to the y. So that means it's ln of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. But we let y equal sinh inverse. So that means sinh inverse of x is equal to ln of x plus square root of x squared plus 1, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. You can also take derivatives of inverse hyperbolic functions. You could prove these. Um, we'll just do one of the proofs. So we'll prove that the derivative of sinh inverse is 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared. So let's let, again let y equal uh, sinh inverse of x. So now if we apply sinh to both sides, we get sinh of y is equal to x. OK, so now we can do uh, implicit differentiation. If you wanted to, you could have directly went and uh, differentiated this, because we just proved this. But then you have to differentiate a log of a square root, and it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. You'll get the right answer, but it's a little bit easier if you do logarithmic differentiation, because then you just get cosh of y times dy dx. Sorry, not logarithmic differentiation, implicit differentiation. So derivative of uh, sinh is, co is cosh. And then because we're doing this implicitly, we have to use the chain rule multiplied by dy dx. And then derivative of x is just 1. OK, let's uh, take a second and remember that we proved that cosh squared minus sinh squared Uh, is equal to 1. We also know that cosh of y is positive. So that means that we can do the square root, or in other words, we can add cinch to both sides to move it over. We get cosh squared is 1 plus cinch squared, and then we take the square root, and we can see that cosh y is equal to the square root of 1 plus, 1 plus cinch squared y. So that means that we can replace uh, this thing with it. So let's divide both sides by cosh y. We get dy dx 
is equal to 1 over cosh y. And let's plug in what we just calculated cosh y to be square root of 1 plus cinch squared. However, we said that uh, x is cinch y. So cinch squared is x squared. So this is 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared, as we wanted it to be. Let's find the derivative of tanj inverse of sine. Notice this is not cinch. This is our old friend sine. So taking the derivative, we're looking at the derivative of tanj inverse of sine. So this is a composition, so we use the chain rule. So the derivative of tanj inverse is 1 over 1 minus x squared, so it's 1 over 1 minus sine squared, right? If you look back, that was this guy. So we have to still multiply by the derivative of sine because we're using the chain rule. We get that this equals 1 over 1 minus sine squared times derivative of sine is uh, cosine. So that means that, well, 1 minus sine squared by the Pythagorean identity is cosine squared. So this is cosine over cosine squared, which is just 1 over cosine or secant. It's actually a pretty cool result.